Well, hello there, friends. Another fantastic recipe today. I made a pot roast and I'm serving it with pappardella pasta. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to make it. It melts in your mouth. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and by all means, ring that bell. Stay tuned, we're gonna make it right now. Well, hello there, friend. Let me show you how easy it is to make this pot roast. This is the pot roast my mom used to make. And she served with pappadella pasta. And on her memory, we are going to cook it with pappadella pasta, which is a large, large fettuccine. And it's going to be delicious. Let's get going right away, my friends. Today, I'm going to try to do something I've never done before, to use only one pot. All right? Because I know a lot of you don't like to do dishes. I don't blame you. I don't like them either. So, I'm gonna get going, and then I'll talk a little bit about my mise en place, okay? I got a pot going, one pot, we're gonna try to do one pot. I got a little clarified butter. You know, after clarified butter, friends, use a good cooking oil, whatever makes you happy, okay? Uh, try to get one with high smoke points. Um, uh, um, avocado oil is great, high smoke point, vegetable oil, whatever you wanna use, okay? I use clarified butter. If you don't know how to make clarified butter, friends, you gotta check on our videos. It's over there, somewhere. There's a link in there, and uh, and you learn how to make clarified butter. It's really easy, and then your high, high smoke point, like 400 degrees, 450, 500. We don't burn in, with clarified butter. It's wonderful, my friends. All right, we're gonna put uh, salt and pepper. We're using a uh, a top round, a uh, a chuck chuck roast, chuck roast, not a top round, a chuck roast, chuck roast. You can find that in most stores. Um, sometimes they call it a, a seven bone steak, or the top one is different. It's a little more tough, the top one. It's a little cheaper, but this is wonderful, my friends. You can find that everywhere, okay? And um, sometimes they call it seven bone steak. Also, it's got a little bone and look like a seven in there. We want to make sure we're hot, and we're looking at um, 365 degrees. So, a lot of people put flour on it, uh, supposedly to cook the flour. It doesn't do a damn thing. Okay, so don't waste your time putting the flour on it. Number one, it interferes with the Maillard reaction, which is creating that beautiful crust. And two, we don't need it, not now. We're gonna need it later. And also, you know what it does? The flour will burn in the bottom of your pot. And we have enough trouble as it is. Uh, today, we don't need any more trouble to create, uh, the, the flour will burn, I promise you. It doesn't do a thing. I've done it with or without. I've been doing it like this for 50 years, okay? Maybe more. <laughs> Look. We have hot, we're gonna put it in a pan, and and we don't touch it, friends. We don't touch it, that's it. I'm telling you, don't touch it. All right, let me wash my hand real quick, my friends. Uh, we are going to, uh, to let it get the Maillard reaction. And that's creating the caramelization of protein and it gives us a lot of flavor. So what we're gonna do, Normally, I take a fry pan, okay? It's easy for me. I take a fry pan, and um, let me make sure. Oh, here we go. Uh, I had it on low while the camera, when I was setting up, I didn't want it to be too high, so now all of a sudden, I'm not cooking anymore. That's okay. It'll be good. We're not going to touch it. You'll see. It's going to be beautiful golden brown, and we're not going to have to worry too much about the, the font in the bottom, which is the caramelization you get in the bottom. We just want to make sure we clean it so it does not burn Okay, so it's okay to use one part, but you just gotta pay attention of what's happening to your ingredients. And we're gonna find out in a second, okay? First, we're gonna let it do, that's why you don't wanna touch it right now. Let's get, first of all, two things. If you touch it right now, it's probably gonna stick. It's the same thing you do a steak in a fry pan. If you do a, a chicken on the grill, right? You put a chicken on the grill and, and, and after 30 seconds, you wanna play with it, right? What happened? It sticks, right? Leave it three minutes and don't touch it. You'll see what happened. It unstick, unstick, is that a word? <laughs> right, it unstick itself because the protein released themselves, okay? So it's important to leave it alone. Don't be playing with it. We want to though, right? <laughs> but we're not gonna do it. All right, onion. The onion are big, I cut big. You see what I do? And what I do, friends, I, uh, I, tell, I wanna show you how I cut the onion, right? So remember the root end of the onion and the top end of the onion, right? Uh, very rarely do we cut against the grain. That's the grain right there, right? But in this case, I want big piece of onion. So I cut one time, two time, right? You can see this, right? One, one, two, three, I cut against the grain. 
Then I flip it, and then I cut it like this. Big, 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 because they're going to cook two and a half, three hours. So now when I get to here, what do I do here? Flip it. You see? Otherwise, it's too difficult, right? And voila. Now you got big cut onion. See? So remember, one cut against the grain, two cut against the grain. Flip it around now with the grain. You see? So now you get here. What do you do? Oh, well, huh. what do you do? There you go. Don't do this. Let it flip it, right? And, and don't worry. It doesn't matter. This is not like a... Uh, very important, they're going to cook for three hours. We don't want them to be too small. If they're too small, you know what's going to happen, friends, if they're too small? They're going to completely disappear. We don't want them. Now, it looks like a lot of onion. My onions are huge. <laughs> and and they're, they're beautiful. They're wonderful. They're organic onions, and I buy a whole food. I love them. They're wonderful. Um, uh, uh, they're big, and I don't think you can ever have too many onions. I mean, really, what are you going to say? You know, I like your roast, but don't do much onion. Get out of my kitchen. Uh, onion, mushroom, and you know the thing, right? You, you know the thing. What I do is I cut them in quarters. I cut them in quarters. <laughs> don't get me started. I cut them in quarters. You see, look, look. You cut, you cut them, boom, boom, in quarters. If they're big, I cut them in six segments. I don't slice them. What do you think? We should check it? No, not yet. Carrots, big carrots. You see, look, look, they're big. Remember that they're going to cook for a long time, right? Celeries, big also. You're going to give you flavor. Then I got rosemary and thyme, chopped nice. And I got a few cloves of garlic. I got some red wine. If you don't use red wine, you don't have to use red wine. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, baby. <laughs> um, you don't have to use red wine if you don't use red wine. You don't need it. You know, if you don't drink it, you don't miss it. <laughs> I, I would have a problem <laughs> with it. And my, my household with it all day, they were, <laughs> uh, Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of extra Omani flavor, very nice, okay? And a little bit of stock, okay? So now, very simple, okay? We got the thing, we're putting it in here. Now, look, look, look. Look at this, look at this. You see what I'm talking about, friends? This is just to create the Maya reaction to get a beautiful crust around it. Now, you hear a lot of people then tell you, searing the meat, in the juices. I don't know where they got that idea from, okay? It doesn't seal any juices. It just creates the Maya reaction. I heard somebody the other day say that's why he puts the flour so the juice seals in. I don't know what book or television they're watching, but that doesn't do this, okay? We're going to put the flour because we're going to need it after we put all that liquid in there. We're going to need it, but we're not going to do it that way. So, we're going to wait for the Maillard reaction to happen on the other side. And then we're going to do it even on, on the bottom right there because that's pretty big. And um, when this is done, we're going to come back to you and we're going to do the onion. We're going to do the mushroom. So it's going to be in stages. Okay? I don't want the video to be too long, my friends. All right? So stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes when both sides are beautiful golden brown and and even the rounded also a golden brown. Okay, so we'll be back in a few minutes. You know, Jack, it may be good when we're filming this, then without a sound, you can take the quick motion, you know, of me doing this, right? I think it would be kind of cool to do a quick motion with your music, you know, ta da 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 Okay, friends, look. You see how beautiful that is? Look, I even did the side by there. Both sides are down. They're beautiful, okay? And the smell of it is amazing. So now, let's deal with the pot, okay? Because this pot is very hot. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the onion, okay? So now, we are got to deal with those onion, guys. Very carefully now. Let me explain you what happened here. we got some fonts in the bottom. You see right there? You got the phone right there, right? So I'm taking a wooden spoon and I'm scraping them. I am. Because if I don't scrape them, they're going to burn, friends. So that's the only issue about having uh, only one pot. You have to be careful with the bottom of your pot. Then you get rid of all the foam. Those are wonderful. The caramelization of protein is delicious. This is all flavor, friends. So we want to make sure we get it all. All right, we're going to continue. We'll be back in a few minutes when the, when the onion are really beautifully caramelized, okay? Okay, friends, we are back. And uh, 
and the onion are nicely caramelized. Now we're going to put the mushroom. Remember now, it's very important to have this order, my friends. Okay, very important. We got the orders because if we don't have the orders, uh, then you put everything at once. If you put the mushroom at the same time, you put the onion. You get all the water from the onion, and uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to caramelize the onion. You're going to have to wait for all the mushrooms for the onion to escape the pot before the onion caramelizes, and you're never really going to get them nice. But if you do it this way, one tab at a time. You know, I, I know I explain all the time, and I'm going to be redundant of some of you, but forgive me. Uh, we, you know, it's amazing. Uh, uh, last month we had like 60, 70, 80,000 new subscribers. It's really amazing. And all those people have never seen, never heard me say that. So <laughs> I know a lot of you have heard me many times, but it's okay. You, you know, it is what it is, folks. We're, gonna, we're here to learn and to have some good time and have some great food. So look, I want to show you. I'll show you. Look at the bottom of my pot. You see how nice and clean that is? You see, nothing burned, same pot, so I used one pot. I've been trying to use only less pot because everybody's telling me to use too much pot. What would help me get rid of the, um, the water in a mushroom? Salt. And you know what? We have so many fabulous salt. We have a garlic salt. It's not that garlic salt you buy at a grocery store, okay? I promise you. This, this garlic salt right here, my friend, is amazing. Mediterranean sea salt with roasted garlic, okay? This is not like a crap they put on here we go all right so salt is really going to help us extract the water out of the um out of the uh, the mushroom okay we're going to do that all right we're looking good so far all right now we're going to put the garlic release a little bit of fragrance in the garlic and then we're going to start to put a little bit of uh you'll see all right so now before we put the, the garlic, is just going to be there for a few minutes, few seconds. Garlic doesn't need to brown. Quite the contrary, I don't want it to brown. Some channel do that, I don't do that. I don't like to brown garlic. I like it to be very delicate. We're going to put a little bit of flour in here now, and then we're going to start adding some liquid. Okay, so a little bit of flour. If we have a lot of liquid, you've seen how I do it. I put my strainer in the liquid and I introduce it. That's a good way to do it. But if we don't have any liquid, then we gotta have another way to do it. And the best way to do it is to take your flour and introduce it gently with a strainer, you see? Introduce it gently with a strainer so you don't have big lumps, okay? All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna introduce it to the dish. Oh, one mushroom came out. <laughs> Okay, so now you have to be careful of two things now. One, the flour could attach in the bottom. So now we're going to put a little bit of wine. If we don't do wine, we're going to do a little stock. If we don't do wine, we'll do a little stock. You got to put some liquid now. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen, right? It's going to stick in the bottom. All right, so now we are again in a mission to clean the bottom of our pot to make sure it doesn't stick. And you feel it. That's why I like to use a wooden spoon for that, friends. I can feel the bottom of my pot. Feel the bottom of your pot. You see? All right? Really important. And we're doing two, two things at one time. We are now reducing our wine. You see? Reducing wine. The minute you put wine, folks, and you're going to cook it for a while, you got to reduce it. You got to get rid of all that alcohol. So reduce the wine. Okay? How much wine did I put in? What do you think? Half a bottle. There you go. A little more. And the rest is for me. Okay, now we're going to bring it to boil and we're going to let it reduce. It's doing so many things right now. First, we're doing really good introducing the flour. That's number one. Number two, uh, we are getting rid of the alcohol, bring it to boil. And the garlic is going to start releasing its delicate fragrance. All right, so so far we're doing really good. We haven't put any stock yet. If you're not drinking wine, you can just add stock. But remember now. Don't forget, scrape the bottom of the pot, friends. Otherwise, it's going to stick, okay? You want to, I like to keep my pot clean in the bottom. Not because it's easier to clean. Of course, it is easier to clean. But most important, let me put it in the middle. But most important because I don't want any burned bits. Trust me, you cook it for two and a half hours. I don't care how slow you are. If you have burned bits in the bottom of the pot, they, you're going to test them. It's going to test burn. And I hate that. It's terrible, 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 terrible. All right, so we're looking good. We're starting to look beautiful. 
Now we're going to put a little bit of stock. For those of you that have followed my video on the stock, folks, this is my beautiful bee stock. Look at gorgeous that is. You see? Look at this. It's gorgeous. All right, so now I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put my stock in here. I'm putting about um, two ladle of it. Yeah, that's an eight-ounce ladle. Um, I like extra sauce, extra juice. Okay, it's really up to you, my friends, whether you put it in there or not. Okay, so now we're looking good. We're looking really good, I'm telling you. The smell of it is amazing, my friend. I'm going to put some peppers. I'm going to put a little more salt because I don't have enough salt yet. Just a little bit of more salt. I'm going to reduce the heat. I don't need it to be so high anymore now. Right? And then I'm going to put my carrots. Now, those guys are going to take a long time to cook. Trust me. They like, they're, shoo, mama mia. And the celery. And the, everything is big. It's, everything is sliced big. All right. We're going to put this in there like this. You see? It's looking good. It's looking good. Now, tonight I'm going to serve with, with today I'm going to serve with papadella pasta. But you can also serve with the little potatoes. You know those little potatoes in there? Put them in there. They'll be perfectly fine. They'll cook perfectly fine. All right, just put them in there. Wash them and put them in there. It'll be great. I think I'm going to put just a little bit more stock. So that'll be about three cups of stock. And then we're going to take our beautiful hunk of meat right there, my friends. And oh, oh, mama mia. Look, see? I always forget something. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the right China if, if I didn't forget something. I got to forget something every time. Look. I have thyme and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, rosemary. Use sage. It's wonderful also in there. If you don't have fresh herbs, you want to use dry herbs, there's nothing wrong with it if you don't have them, right? If you don't have them, you don't have them. What are you going to do? Use dry herbs, but be careful. Use less. They're more intense, okay, in the volume of it. So be careful. No, use less, okay? So we're now going to, ooh, Worcestershire sauce. You don't have to put Worcestershire sauce in there. It's just great wonderful unami flavor in there, just an extra flavor, uh, different layers of flavor, very little of it. I promise you, it really, it gives it a new shape, je ne sais quoi. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is, can't describe it, but trust me, it's it look good, good in there. Just a little bit, eh? to share sauce, wish to share. And look at this, my friends. So now, remember, we're braising this, right? Braising means in liquid. You know, I do a filet mignon like that. Amazing. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing, my friends. Right there. So now, you got two choices to cook this. Cook it on the stove, very slowly. Bring it to a bloop, 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 bloop. Very little, very little. Now, don't go that crazy, you know. Right? You can do that. Or you can put a cover on it and pop it in the oven. And the oven's going to take longer. You cook it at three and a quarter, 350 Fahrenheit. And uh, uh, keep an eye on it uh, for, you know, take about three, four hours as well, okay? On the stove, it might take a little bit less time. We're going to see. I'm going to show you when it's ready. It's ready when it falls apart. You know, you can actually uh, put it with a fork on it. That's when it's ready. And you can serve with mashed potatoes. You can serve with a potato in it. You can serve with pasta like my mom used to do. Uh, whatever you do, I know you're going to love it. We're going to bring it to boil. We're going to cook it slowly. And when it's done... We're going to serve it. All right, so we'll be back in um, however long it's going to take. I, I would say a good two and a half, three hours. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, friends. Well, <laughs> that took forever to cook. I mean, we're talking about three and a half, four hours, folks. Do me a favor. Put it in the oven. Much easier than putting it on the stove. On the stove, it's very labor intensive. You got to constantly mix it. Is it going to stick? And, you know, and you got to cook it slowly. Put it in the oven, then you don't worry about it. One, every hour, once in a while, you check it, and you make sure, and what you're looking for is uh, it's falling apart. You, you're looking for the meat to fall apart, my friends. You see? You're looking for the meat to fall apart. Look at this. You see? Right here? It's falling apart. That's all we're looking for. Okay? I'll show you. I'll take a two fork. And that's the idea. That's what we're looking for here, friends. You see? Look, look. You want to make sure, you see, it falls apart. That, you know what I'm going to do, friends? I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on the, on the cutting board so we can all look together, okay? Because that's really the only way you'll see, my friends. We're going to take it right here, and you see, look, look. You see, this is what we're looking for here, friends. You see right there? It's falling apart. Look at this. 
Let me tell you, and the meat right there, my friends, the flavor. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is fabulous. So what my mom used to do, they used to take the meat like that, right? And shred it all and put it and mix it with a pasta and give it to us with a sauce and a pasta. And let me tell you, that was really something, my friends. All right, so let me turn this off. We don't need it to go anymore. I got some uh, papadella pasta, which is just a, this, just do it with rice, do it with mashed potatoes, do it with do it with whatever you want. Papadella pasta is a pa -pa 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 -de -la pasta is a large fettuccine, okay? And uh, and they're wonderful. And what I like to do is just put them in a in a boiling water, which is not boiling that much right now, but it's supposed to be boiling. And uh, and and then I, what I do is I I dry them. I put them with a little butter because <laughs> we're gonna never have too much butter. And uh, and and remember at the last minute, friends, sprinkle it over the parsley. And it gives us some more brightness because after that many hours of cooking, your vegetables and have lost their, their, their punch, if you will, their brightness because they cook so long, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to put a little butter in there and then we're going to take this pasta. It is, is, oh, it's hot. It's hot. Oh, yeah, it's hot. And we're going to put it in here and just mix it up with a little butter and a little bit of parmigiano Reggiano. That's all we do. Very simple, my friend. If you do this with mashed potatoes, Oh, man, something is hot on my hand. This is it. Um, mashed potatoes also, it's wonderful, okay? But very simple, eh? Little salt and pepper, very little salt, because you already got it in there. See, a little salt and pepper, a little uh, parmigiano Reggiano on the pasta. You can certainly skip that if you don't want the parmigiano Reggiano, but I think you should want it. It's delicious, right? And you know what? Let's make the pasta even a little more pretty. Right there, let's turn the heat off. I don't need no more heat. I love it. Pa a beautiful pasta with just a little bit of butter and a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. That's all. I, I, very simple. You see? Oh, hey, come back over here, you. You see? And I love it when it's just plain like that, my friends. Very simple. And then we're going to take this meat right there, my friends. And it's right there, you see? You can mix it up. The, the, my mom used to put it in a big pot and mix everything, so it was... It was beautiful, right? And then we take a, a ladle and we pour some of that beautiful sauce right here, my friend. You see? We take some of the vegetables right there and we put some of the carrot that are perfectly cooked. You see? And some of the mushroom and some of the garlic right there. And we take another piece of meat and we put it right on top. And voila. And voila. Whoa, oh, mama mia. Hold on. Hold on. I made a mess out of my cutting board. So now, and then what I like to do is I remind, I like to remind everybody what herbs I have in there. So I have some thyme and I have a little bit of rosemary. So I like to remind them. So then when they get the dish, they expect those two flavors. And this is it, my friend. A touch more parsley right there. And uh, since we're among friends, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a bite out of this. It's too much. I'm gonna have to take for taking me for it. Look at it. It falls apart completely. Mm. Oh. Mmm, potato. Melts in my mouth, my friend. But now remember, leave it in the oven three, four hours until you can do what I just did with the fork. That's all you have to do, my friends. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching.